my studio. My name is Karen Margulis and I am excited about my new series of videos that I'm going to be doing and that is I'm going to review different sets of pastels and then eventually pastel supplies. But I'm going to start off with basic simple sets. I've been asked uh, in the past, Karen, I know you really like those Terry Ludwig pastels, but they're kind of pricey and I'm not sure I'm ready to invest or I'm not sure I'm going to even like pastels enough. So what can I get that's not so expensive but still decent? So I went ahead and took on the challenge and bought several different sets that I'm going to try out and review them for you in this video series. And at the end of each video, so stick with me till the end, I'm going to do a very quick painting to test them out and I'm going to give the, them a score. So I'm going to rate them from 1 to 10. Uh, I'm going to rate the pastel stick. And then I'm going to rate the set that I'm sharing because, you know, I might like the stick, but the set might not be a really good combination. So we'll, we'll get two scores. So that'll come at the end of the video. Um, so the first video that I want to share, or the first review that I want to share, is with a set that will cost you under $50. So this is a set of 16 pastels. I'm going to talk about it and, and show you how they work. Uh, but you can get them in the United States. I've got them on fineartstore.com for $46.99, and I'll put the details in the comments. But you can also get them overseas. You can get them in Europe through Jackson's Art Supplies, and they are 36 pounds at Jackson's. Okay, so that's what you pay for the set. So what is the set I'm talking about that I'm going to review today? Oh, before I, before I do that, disclaimer, you want to paint on a budget but you have to be aware of the fact that you get what you pay for. So it's just like if you pay, oh, these, this, these come to about $3 a stick, right? So $3 is pretty low because most of the high quality pastels range from $6 to up to $12 to $15 and more per stick. So $3 is on the low end of the scale. You get what you pay for. So it's just kind of like if I were to say, well, you can drive a Mercedes or you can drive this beat up old used uh, Toyota Tercel or something. I don't know. Both cars are going to get you where you need to go but you're going to enjoy the ride of the Mercedes much better. And it's the same thing for pastels. Those $15 stick pastels are much nicer to work with than the $3. And with the $3 a stick pastels, especially when you get a, a, a very limited set, which is what this is, we'll talk about this, you have to kind of have some tricks up your sleeves to get them to work. So they're more challenging to work with the budget pastels. All right, so that's my disclaimer. Now, on to the review. So what, what am I talking about? What am I going to review today? This is Daler Rowney's Assorted Soft Pastel. It's a set of 16, I believe, pastels. Let me read to, to you what it says on the box. Daler Rowney, by the way, is a uh, Eng based in England, were well known for their art supplies. It says, uh, De La Rowney Artist Soft Pastels are a delight to use. Each carefully prepared blend of pure pigment gives a soft, velvety mark, allowing for better coverage. Color strength is dictated by precise proportions of the ingredients, and every batch of De La Rowney Artist Soft Pastels is stringently color matched to closely defined tolerances. And they are also unsurpassed levels of light fastness. So there are 186 tints in the range, and they are available in sets of cool, warm, dark, and assorted. And this is the assorted set. So what are they saying? They're saying that the uh, artist quality made with pure pigment, they are mixed with clay and, uh, let's see, I wrote it down, uh, clay chalk and china clay and that's what gives them their smooth consistency and also that's what tints them so they come in from one each color has uh, number one to four four being the darkest and one being the lightest all right let's open up the box and see what we have the first thing that we have is a little note so i'm going to read this note Rowney Artist Pastels. Every possible care is taken in packaging these pastels on account of their extremely fragile nature. No allowance is therefore, no, 
therefore can be made in the event of breakage. They are equally serviceable in broken or unbroken state. Made in England by Dale Rowney. I love this little note because yes, we can use the broken pastel, and they're not going to give you a new one if they're if they're broken in transit. However, if they were to be pulverized like dust, which I recently got some pastels like that, you really can't use them. You have to reconstitute them. All right, let's see the unveiling. Here we go. So first. Impression. They have wrappers on them and that means I'm going to have a little work to do because I have to work with the wrappers off. They're also a pretty good size. Here they are in my hand. Um, but they're too long for me to work with. I'm going to have to cut them in half because I like to work with the pastel on its side. Uh, if I didn't take the wrappers off and use them as, as they are, I would end up only having this much to work with and I would end up drawing with them rather than painting. That's why I have to take the wrappers off. Uh, what else do I notice? It, there's a, um, a small range of colors. You have your basic colors, red, yellow, blue, green, and violet. And there seems to be a warm and cool of each of those, which is a nice touch. A warm and a cool of the yellow, the red, the purple, the blue. There's a, a dark and a little bit lighter brown, and there's a white. There is no black in this set, which is interesting. Um, <clears throat> one thing I notice about the colors, though, is that they're all kind of a bright, pure color for the most part. There's not a there's not very many neutral gray down colors. The uh, yellow ochre is a little bit of a neutral. This yellow green is a little bit kind of neutral, but everything else is pretty bright and intense. The other thing that I notice is that they are all uh, fairly dark. And if I look at the tint number on the wrappers, most of them are four and three, meaning they're on the darker end of the scale. The only one that is light is white, and that's a one. So you have here, right in the middle, bright, intense colors that are about a middle to dark value. This is typical of these uh, entry-level assorted sets because you will find that there will be these bright colors, there's not a lot of grayed down neutral colors, um, there's a black and there's usually a, a black and a white. And you can use the black and white to adjust the colors to a certain extent, <clears throat> but the thing is you need to have a little bit of understanding of color theory when you start layering colors to it, do the right uh, combination to get the right combination of colors to get the right blend. Um, we'll, we'll work with that in a little bit. So that's my first impression. I'm going to have to take the wrappers off. You know, this one's not even really on very tight, so that makes it easy. I can just peel it right off. Now, as I do this, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, how are you going to know what color that is? Um, well, there's a few things that you can do. You can break them in half, or cut them in half, and save half with the number, if you'd like to do that. You can make a color chart and write the numbers down. Or you can do as I do and not worry about it. Because I, very rarely will I replace the exact color. I don't need to know the exact stick. If I love this color and it gets down really low, I will then say, okay, I need a, a violet. It's a red violet. It's kind of dark. Uh, you know, and you ask yourself these questions and you get something that's close. So I don't really worry about that. So the next thing we want to do is break them. Now, depends on how soft they are. Sometimes they snap in half nicely. Sometimes you have to score them with a utility knife. Let's see how this one does. Very nice. A nice, even, clean break. So that's all I'm going to have to do. I'm going to get to work. I'm going to uh, get these wrappers removed and get them broken in half, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and I've got them all undressed and broken, and I did a pretty good job. This one was already broken under the wrapper, so I got a smaller piece. If you are more of a perfectionist, then I recommend scoring them first with a utility knife and then snapping them, and you'll get a cleaner break, and you'll be more precise, but this will certainly do the job. So I want to now put them to the test, and I... And I um, have up here on my board a piece of unsanded paper. This is just a piece of Canson on the smooth side and a piece of UART sanded paper. 
and <clears throat> two different types of paper because the pastels will perform differently on different types of paper. And typically, the harder the pastel, the, um, har the harder they are, the more challenging it is to work with on unsanded paper. These are supposed to be soft, and I have to now rank them as far as how soft I think they are compared to other pastels that I know. I'll start with the orange. First thing I'll do is just kind of see if the pigment comes off on my finger. You guys can't see that one. Let's try the blue. It comes off fairly easily. That tells me that it's pretty soft. Um, but when I rub my finger over them, uh, my fingers don't get filthy. Whereas if I used if a softer pastel, maybe Terry Ludwig or Sennelier, I think my fingers would be filthy. So these that tells me uh, right off the bat that these are soft, but they're on the harder side of the soft scale. All right, let's try uh, making a mark on the unsanded paper. Okay, this is it's coming off nicely. It feels good. Um, I'm getting a good amount of coverage. The I'm going to try it now on sanded paper. That feels a little bit better. I'm getting more coverage. You can see less of the paper is showing through, which means more of the pigment is being grabbed and taken onto the paper. Um, I, I, I'm thinking that th this is a soft pastel, but it's, again, on the harder end. This is not as soft as, say, a, a Schmincke or a Sennelier or even a Terry Ludwig. Maybe closer to the harder end with the Mount Visions. Um, that's the closest one that I can think of. So I want to put it through the layering test, or, or basically, uh, how quickly is it going to fill up the tooth of the paper by layering? So I'm going to just go down my row and start trying to layer on top. And I'll do it on both sanded and unsanded. A lot of this is going to have to do with not just the pastel, but the paper itself. Uh, typically, we can get more layers on sanded paper than we can... Okay, now that one, look at that. That one's not coming off. Uh, there's an issue with this one, and it, it's most likely because of the way it was extruded when it was being made. It's not, it's not even, um, so I'm not getting a nice even coverage. So what do I do normally when I have that issue is take a, a sanded paper and then just rub it so that we can get a nice even side. So see, now we have it. Now it's better. So let me just keep going down. A lot of times, um, some of these pastels also have a, a coating on them from the manufacturing process, and you need to rub them on sanded paper to remove that coating. And so you can, I don't know if you can see the difference on the camera, but you've got like this shiny outer uh, shell and then when you put it on sandpaper actually the pigment starts to get released. Um, let me do this. Oh I forgot the purple over here. Let's go with the blue. I think the blue is going to have, oh I thought the blue would have the same problem. Definitely have an easier time with this on the sanded paper. So again that tells me that this pastel is on the harder right end of the scale. Um, let's see about the white one. I'm not trying to make any colors. I'm just trying to see how many layers I can get. No, that one's not coming off at all. That one needs a little sand sanding. Now you can see on the unsanded paper that I'm having a much harder time getting the pastel to release. And again, this needs some help. Uh, that's because I'm probably almost filled the tooth of the paper at this point. It's just too much for it. Sometimes the softer pastels will do a better job, but I'm still going to town on the uh, sanded paper. This needs sanding. Still going. I once did just as a just a experiment uh, with UART paper. I ended up having like 75 layers, and I still hadn't filled the tooth. So this is not really this de this uh, part of the review is not really to see how good the paper is, although you can see how good the paper is. 
but basically to see uh, how easily these pastels layer. And I would say even though they're on the hard side of the softness scale, they still do a pretty good job and they are very vibrant. I think the colors are really nice. That's going to be an issue when you don't want those vibrant colors, so we'll have to work at ways to dull them down, but it's definitely doable. So the next part of my review is I like to do what I call the apple test. And I'm going to paint a very, very quick apple on, we'll start with the unsanded paper. Okay, this is not meant to be a masterpiece. This is meant to test these pastels. So I'm going to do one apple. The first thing I'm going to do is start by blocking in the darks that I see. So that's in the shadow. Just a little bit dark over on this side. And uh, I'm actually just working out um, with the pastel on the side just to see how they layer and how I can get a variety of colors with this particular set. Because remember we talked about earlier in the review that this is a limited um, selection of colors. So if this is going to be the only set you buy because you're on a budget, um, just know that it's limited and you'll have to find ways to work with it. And that's what I'm doing right now, just to see, hmm, can we get something to resemble an apple? Now one thing that you can notice is that the white of the paper is peeking through and oftentimes that just is distraction. So I'm going to just rub it all in, get rid of that. And then just keep working. Let's see, we need to uh, add some of the light. This is where it gets tricky when you have, when you're getting close to filling the tooth. And I can tell I'm getting there on this particular piece of paper. Let's, let's get, now because we don't have a black, the darkest dark we have is this brown and this blue. So if we combine the brown and the blue, maybe we can get a, more of an interesting dark value. How are we going to get those highlights that sparkle on this apple? Let's try to add some uh, yellow. And there's a kind of green. Let's add some of this green. This, this particular green pastel needed to have some sanding done. Let's take, I would like a uh, light blue highlight because this particular apple is getting highlight from the a blue light. So I don't have a light blue but I have a white and a blue so what if I layered the white and the blue and go back and forth just to tone it down, lighten it a little bit. All right. That's going to give me enough information to give a score on this particular set. Now, I want to score it on the pastel, the stick itself, and then score the set as a standalone set. Alright, so I'm going to rate it from 1 to 10, 10 being the best, like I can't live without these pastels, 1 being uh, I probably could do without these pastels. So. Uh, any, anytime there's going to be a 5 to 7, mm, that's a kind of middle range. 7 is actually going to be a pretty good score. Uh, I'm not going to ever give out too many 10s, just, just so that you have an idea of my scoring. And I'm going to say, let me do one thing. <clears throat> Sometimes it's not fair when you work on the unsanded paper, because the unsanded paper with pastels that are on the harder side, uh, you don't get the same results, and these go on so much better on the sanded paper. So to give it a fair score, I think it's important when you're trying out pastels to try it on sanded and on sanded paper to see what, where you get better results. So definitely getting some better results on this 
unsand it. I also didn't test out the ability that this pastel has to uh, make linear marks, okay? So like I'm working on the side, but I notice that you can get some really nice fine lines on the tip or the edge. So that's important to me because I like to combine linear marks in my pastel paintings. So this works really well. I think for 50 bucks or what did I, what did I say? $3 a stick, $46.99 for this set. Uh, if I work with it and start to um, layer colors to get better optical blends, I think I could do a pretty decent job with this set. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. I'm going to give it a six. So the pastel uh, itself a six uh, because I think it's soft but a little bit on the hard side, not crumbly, but still giving you a decent mark. Uh, nice and vibrant, clean, I uh, like it. Um, the set, you're limited with this set. It's like any other assorted basic entry level set. Uh, so it's not the fall of the set. I'd like a few more neutrals. Uh, other than that, I'm going to say this. I'm going to give this a six. I'm going to give it a six as well. I think a six as well. So if you're looking for a budget set, um, just to try out pastels and you're willing to sacrifice some of the variety that you would get in larger sets, this will give you a good feeling for what a pastel can do. Alright, so that's my review on this Daler Rowney Soft Pastel assorted set. By the way, Daler Rowney makes a less expensive set called Simply Pastels, and I'm going to review that in another review, and those are like $7 for 12 So we'll see, we'll compare. And I've got a whole bunch of other pastels coming, uh, pastel reviews coming. I've got a stack of pastels that I can't wait to try and review. Now, if you want to see more paintings done with this set, I'm going to be using this set in some of my demos over on my Patreon page. So you can head over there. The link is in the description. And uh, join us. We'll be using a limited palette of budget pastels. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. And I look forward to sharing the next one with you.